Hi everyone, welcome back to DevDoge Academy and welcome back to Introduction to Programming using Java. So, if we take a look at the algorithm from the previous class, you will see that we are kind of repeating ourselves a lot. So every time we want to assign a specific position of the array, we have to kind of create the number of lines that actually matches the number that we gave when sizing the array. And if you take a look, it's always kind of incrementing by one. And you saw here somewhere in between all these exercises that there is a structure that will help us go one by one. So when we work with arrays, the chances that you are going to work with a four structure, it's very, very high. So this is what we are going to do in this video. We are going to basically uh, do the same exercise, but we are going to uh, print the data using one for loop. So let's create a new class, select the arrays package. Alt insert, Java class, press enter, and then arrays 02. So let's start exactly the same way. First, let's declare another um, array, but this time let's do something different. We, we did with uh, the, the grades, but now let's use the names. So string, remember, since this is array, we open and close brackets. And then let's use names. Okay, same thing. We have to use the keyword new, and then the same word we used here, and we need to give a size. So I'll give a size three. Okay, we need to assign. So first, let's start easy and let's assign manually. Wait, what's the default value? Because you said when we use primitive types, the default value for arrays will be one of those that we saw uh, here somewhere. So with string, it will be null. Any reference type, any object, as it says here, it will be null. What's null? It's nothing. So when you create a variable that is a reference type and it's inside an array, basically it's just empty. It does not exist anything there. So you cannot use, you just have to assign. So it's not something that you can do much with it. So basically it will create three empty spaces because this is not a primitive type of array. Okay, so let's give some names. Names. Uh, First position, I want to assign. Mm. Uh, we have been using Dragon Ball, but let's use uh, another one. Uh, Rosaki. Rukia, position one. And in a way, position two. So basically, we have an array with three positions. Let me add here a comment. Each one of these positions, we have one name. Remember, we have this one Kurosaki, I have this one Rukia, and we have this one Inoue. Okay, so each one of these positions will have one name assigned, but now I want to print all of them. Cool, so I want to use a conditional a structure that will go one by one, starting from zero. Let's use for. So for, first I will create an auxiliary variable here, starting with zero. And then I want it to iterate over what? What's the number that we should use? So until i is lower than, hmm, this is interesting. So if I have here three positions and I say, hey, I want to go less or equal than three, what's going to happen? Look, it's going to iterate over the first one. The first one is zero. Nice. Then one, one is uh, less than three. Yes. Two, two is less than three. Yes. And then it's going to iterate over three. Three is less or equal than three. Yes. But the problem when we try to get the position three, oops, we have a problem. So be careful because the index is always, always the size minus one. So in this case, lower than three, because once it reaches three, it's going to stop the iteration. And then I would like this to go one by one. Now, south, and then names, position, um, i. So basically, remember, i is going to go from zero to two. And then I want to get the names and the position and each iteration that we have, we'll get back the value in memory based on the value of i. 
So let's execute first, Control Shift F10. You can see that we have uh, the same results here that we put here. We start from line six to eight. And if you put a breakpoint here and you press Shift F9, you can see exactly like how it works. So you can see here that we have an array of names here. So basically we have an array with three positions. So you can ignore all the coder hash and hash is zeros. Just ignore, just take a look at these names. So position zero, one, and two. Okay, so now I'm going to press F8. So F8. Can you see here that the i is zero because this is the value that we have in memory i is zero and then when i bring back names in a position i as you can see here it's giving the value that is inside the array so what's the position zero so if you span here the names what's the position zero kurosaki so f8 and then when it came back here it will be now one and then it will be two and when it's three it will just go out Cool, very cool. So it means that now we can uh, actually get the values. And if I change the size, let's say I remove here one name, I had only have two, and I change here. What's going to happen here? Well, it's definitely going to give us an exception. Why? Because I'm trying to access a position that does not exist. Position two, the index does not exist, it's only zero, one. So how can we avoid this? So basically, we have to be using the size automatically. Java knows the size of the, the array. So instead of having to hard code the value here of the size, why not just call the size from names.env? Now, it doesn't matter if I just press Ctrl Shift F10, it, what's the length of the, the array now? The length of the array is 2. So less than two means it will go from zero and one if i add again and i change here to three it will automatically go through everything so as you can see i don't have to touch my four i just have to work with the data and the size of the array so one thing less for us to give maintenance to worry about okay so i think uh that's enough for this video. In the next one, let's do a quick exercise. So, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.